Uh, Mr. Cohen. Mr. Cohen is unmuted. Mr. Cohen? I'm unmuted now. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Director Ray. You've done an admirable job so far in foot soldiers in the January 6th insurrection. Kind of like going after Al Capone and getting all of the lottery sales tickets, the, the people that, that do the bootlegging in, in the street. To the best of my knowledge, haven't done anything to go after the people who incited the riot, the big bosses, the leaders, which is Donald Trump. Do you have any investigation or have you done anything to look into Trump's activities on the day of the insurrection, subpoena records of the White House, of phone calls in and out, and of meetings that he and Roger Stone and others may have had with leaders of these groups? Well, uh, again, a Congressman, uh, somewhat along the lines of something I said earlier, because we have uh, not one, but now close to 500 pending criminal cases, all of which are in the hands of judges who feel very strongly about how much I discuss uh, pending cases, I want to be careful about that. We have uh, brought, in addition to what you're describing as kind of the lower level type offenses, we have now started to bring a number of conspiracy charges yes, of various Ray. individuals. Yes, I think there's about 30 plus individuals who have been charged with Ray, conspiracy. Ray. Yes, sir. I appreciate and understand that, but I'm talking about Mr. Big, number one. Have you gone after the people who incited the riot? Well, I'm, I don't think it'd be appropriate for me to be discussing whether or not we are or, or aren't uh, investigating specific individuals. I just oh, don't God. think that's appropriate. I'll accept that and understand that, but I would urge you to do it. He said, come to Washington on the day of the Electoral College, a month earlier, no other day. And he said, it will be big and it will be wild. I read that as violence to occur. And I was with a Capitol policeman on Sunday who said, yes, they had information that said it was gonna be violent. You and the FBI did not make the case. You should have warned and you had a duty to do that. Uh, let me ask you this. You, have you seen Mr. McGahn's testimony yet? No, sir. I urge you to look. I don't know if you can do anything without the direction of the Attorney General, but it appears Mr. McGahn was told to lie by the President about trying, wanting to fire officials that would have resulted in obstruction of justice. I urge you to look at it. Can you act on that testimony independent of the Attorney General? Well, I, I think we have uh, very specific rules about predication um, and approval on certain kinds of investigations. So I'd have to look at, at whatever information you wanted to send our way and we can take a look at the information and evaluate whether or not there's action we could take. It's in the de deposition and it's clear that McGahn said that the president told him to lie and the president also lied. Uh, I would urge you to look at that and talk to Director Garland, uh, to Attorney General Garland about that. Uh, did you infiltrate the crowds of the BL BLM Black Lives Matter protest in Washington when they were in Washington? Uh, Congressman, we don't infiltrate protests uh, as a general rule, certainly. Um, when it comes to uh, criminal activity, we have specific rules uh, covered by the Attorney General guidelines and uh, the so-called DIAG, uh, which is our uh, implementation of the Attorney General guidelines that cover what we can and cannot do. Um, and we would have followed those uh, scrupulously, not just uh, in general, but in the specific uh, period that you're talking about. We don't investigate <laughs> First Amendment activity. We investigate I, I, threats of criminal thank activity. Thank you, Director. I know First Amendment activity is, is, is uh, protected, but was your activities on January 6th different from what it was with Black Lives Matter? Did you observe? Did you try to get more knowledge about what was going on after you had the Norfolk information about the January 6th insurrection? Well, the, the Norfolk information that we've talked about here uh, arrived uh, essentially the night before or the afternoon before January 6th uh, and was promptly passed on. At that point, it was raw, unverified information that we hadn't yet had a chance to, to vet. 
but it, of course, we decided that even though it was raw and unverified, we needed to pass it on to all of our partners, both in the command post and throughout the Joint Terrorism Task Force, to make thank sure you. they had it. Director Wright, thank you. I only have a few seconds left. You have compared ransomware to 9-11. Ransomware is awful and it's a problem. 9-11 was awful. But the insurrection on our capital, unlike anything known since the Civil War, is also awful. Where would you compare the insurrection? And would you admit that it was an insurrection on our capital with the assault on our country on January 11th? The gentleman's time has expired. The witness may answer the question. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. First, let me just say that I don't think any attack, uh, ransomware or January 6th, uh, can fairly be compared to the horror of September 11th and the 3,000 or so individuals who lost their lives that day. Uh, and that attack and my engagement with the victims in my last time in government was a big part of why I came back into this role in the first place. My reference to Jan uh, September 11th in context of ransomware was not about the attack, but about how, how the country came together in response. Now, certainly, when it comes to January 6th, uh, it's a unique type of attack, uh, not just in terms of the number of individuals, but in terms of the uh, effort to disrupt a key part of our constitutional system and the peaceful transition of government, which is such a uh, a hallmark of our country. Uh, so it's a very significant attack in of its own right, and certainly we have, as we've already talked about, close to 500 arrests. We have all of our field offices fully engaged, and the amount of manpower devoted to it is, is extremely significant for one attack, absolutely. The gentleman, the gentle, you, gentleman yields back. Mr. Ray was uh, fr flat out lying right there, and the, and the fact is uh, he is an incompetent director. He was not qualified for this job. I think I'm you know, a huge Trump supporter, but I think it was one of the biggest mistakes uh, of the Trump presidency was putting Christopher Ray in there, and uh, I think he showed it, especially in this, his opening remarks that he made today, how biased he actually is, because everything that he said, especially about extremist violence, was completely sided to the left. Everything that had to do with any type of group that calls themselves patriots or anything that happened on January 6th was noted and, and displayed by his language as something that is far extreme with very little, if any, people that were there that, to be peaceful. And he made it sound as though the left is mostly peaceful with just a few things. Everything that comes out of this guy's mouth is push to the left, but it's subtle. So if you've been, you know, a prosecutor or a, a U.S. attorney, or if you've been in the FBI and you listen to his language, you can literally see this. And I, I, and I think some of these congressmen and congresswomen actually saw this today, and I think they went after him, but he's not going to bend as far as that goes. I will tell you that I have spoken directly to FBI agents that are investigating January 6th, you know, um, issues and ranging from individuals that uh, were in the Capitol to individuals who were not in the Capitol. One, one thing that stands out, the, the, the most recent conversation I had with an FBI, FBI agent here in Salt Lake indicated he said he's never seen anything like this. They are given a mandate. They are to go out. They have been given the questions they're supposed to be asking. They have been given the way they're supposed to proceed on this case. They don't have individualized authority. It is all coming from Washington, D.C. I've spoken to prosecutors that are prosecuting these cases, and this is not individualized justice. They are lumping everybody into the same category, and they are treating them uh, like, un unlike I've ever seen in a case. Uh, the Department of Justice is supposed to address every single case, unless it's a conspiracy case, according to the criminal conduct of that individual. They're not doing that. None of the prosecutors mm -hmm. have authority. It's all coming straight from Washington, D.C. There is so much energy put towards these people, and there's not the same energy put towards Antifa. Why didn't he explain that? Why couldn't he explain that? Well, I don't think he could explain it because, again, he was making this into uh, more of a political uh, stand. And, you know, he, he said there were three categories of people on January 6th. He failed to completely mention the people who were literally invited into uh, the Capitol building by the, the Capitol Police. And the majority of the people that were there did nothing. It, he made it sound as though if you came on the Capitol grounds, you were an extremist. And that is just not the case. 
there were some violent people there. There were some people that went into the Capitol that did some very nefarious things. But his category, uh, the way he categorized these people was absolutely wrong. And the way that the FBI has systematically, as uh, Brett just uh, pointed out there, been told how to investigate January 6th, they've systematically been kept from truly investigating or going after the leftists. And that is so clear because of the way that there's just nothing going down about these individuals on the left. And I'll, I'll just say one other thing. In all my time in the FBI, the only white supremacist case that I ever saw, and I was in New York the entire time, was prison-related. There was no white supremacy, uh, massive uh, agenda going on in the United States, and it's not happening now. And it's another example of how they use these things and push them out in the media. When you think about what Antifa did last summer, the number of federal properties that they destroyed um, or defaced, and the money that they caused to small businesses, the, the, the police officers who they injured, the Secret Service members, they really haven't been held accountable to the same type of behavior that they did all last summer. Why not? They have not been. I mean, you think about what domestic terrorism is. When you burn down a police station and you take over city blocks, that's domestic terrorism. And they have not been held accountable. Uh, I'm ashamed to, to say that, you know, my, my former office, you know, the Department of Justice, I, I wish I could see courage. I wish I, I could see U.S. attorneys standing up. You know, it's interesting. I, I represent an individual who... Um, went into the Capitol, um, was told she could go in, and was actually pointed by a security guard to the direction she should go. And she's being prosecuted. She's being charged with uh, misdemeanors. She, she has no criminal history. She thought the only other Capitol she's ever been in is a state Capitol that's open 24-7. She thought you could walk in. She, so there's a, there's a wide disparity a, a, between, you know, who Chris Ray is identifying and they want to prosecute every single person that was there to send a message. And that's what this is. It's message prosecuting. And, and, and that's mm -hmm. never a, a, an appropriate decision by a prosecutor.